Chapter 4 Kelly stretched and yawned. She was careful not to wake anyone else in the cramped tent. They had gotten to the campground very late, or early, depending on whose opinion was asked. It was dark, and they had agreed to just set up one tent and pile on in. Set up of everything else could wait until later in the morning. She crawled over Bo and stumbled out into the crisp morning. Curse her internal clock, it was just after sunrise, and the ground was covered in frost. She stretched again and decided coffee was the solution to the pounding in her head. She was getting too old for the yearly pre-camping celebration. Kelly pawed through Bo's unlocked trunk before realizing the cooking gear must be in Tomlin's car. Luckily, the driver's door was unlocked, so she popped the trunk using the button on the door. Tiredly, she walked over to find Dylan blinking up at her. Kelly screamed. Dylan tried to shush her. He struggled to sit up, but his legs weren't cooperating after being stuck in the same position for so long. Kelly quickly helped him, and soon he was sitting on the edge of the trunk, the blood starting to flow back to his aching legs. What happened? She questioned with wide eyes as she touched at his jaw, and he flinched. How did he get here? The sleepy Derek asked. Kelly turned to see her friends emerging from the tent. "'Happy birthday, Kelly!' Tiana said weakly as she put a hand to her hurting head. "'Do you like our present?' Bex grinned. "'Caveman style, just for you!' "'Welcome to the Dirty Thirties, Tomlin rumbled. "'If you want to unwrap your present, please do so in private.' Kelly's jaw dropped. She turned an interesting shade of red before glancing at Dylan, then staring at the ground self-consciously. "'I am so sorry. I had no idea.' He held up his hands. Could someone cut these zip ties off? Tomlin came forward with a pocket knife. Dylan noticed with some satisfaction that the big brute limped a little. He cut off the zip ties and extended his hand. Respect. Dylan hesitated for a moment. Then he stood and shook the guy's hand firmly. Dylan Ramsley. Tomlin Newley. Tomlin made introductions. You met Tiana and Bex last night. Bo is my brother over there. Then there's Derek, whom we can never seem to leave behind. Of course, you already know Kelly. Can I have my phone back? Dylan asked Bex. Sure. She grabbed the phone out of the pocket of her cargo pants and tossed it to him. There's no signal. He looked to see no bars. Bex was right. He wouldn't be calling anyone anytime soon. Welcome to the annual camping trip, Tiana said brightly where there are no phones for distractions, just a group of friends having fun for the weekend. Plus, there's Kelly, and it's her birthday, so we decided to get her a present she could really enjoy. Kelly pushed past him and walked into the woods. It was obvious she was upset. Dylan took an involuntary step after her before a hand clamped down on his shoulder. Let the ladies see to her. He watched Tiana and Bex rush after Kelly before turning to look at Tomlin, who just thumped him on the back. Let's get this new brother some gear, the giant smiled. Kelly was mortified beyond belief. She wished the earth would swallow her whole. They had kidnapped Dylan Ramsley. Her friends had no idea what they had done. He could file charges. He could destroy her life further than it was unraveling right now. He could realize she thought he was the handsomest, hunkiest thing around. She found a log and sat down, putting her head in her hands. She was so tired of being the perky, happy one. So tired of trying to make life work, of pretending that everything was okay, even as it all crumbled to pieces again and again. Kelly had been looking forward to this camping trip and ignoring the world before she went back to her everyday life where so many problems were creeping up on her. Now the trip and her birthday were a total mess. She didn't think she would ever be able to look Dylan Ramsley in the eyes again after what her friends had done. Hey, you okay? Tiana sat down beside Kelly and Bex took the other side. I think it went really well this morning, Bex said as she rubbed Kelly's back. Dylan seems like a great guy. Tomlin likes him. What were you thinking? Kelly cried, exasperated at them. You tied him up and put him in the trunk of a car. Then you left him overnight. 
Well, we thought he was the perfect gift, Beck said enthusiastically. Who doesn't want the guy of their dreams handed to them for an entire weekend? He doesn't know how I feel, Kelly hissed. I think he probably does now. Tiana studied her nails. You told him. Kelly groaned and buried her face in her hands again. We had a lot to drink last night. Our judgment may not have been entirely sound, Tiana said ruefully. Look, he's here now, and you have got his attention for the entire weekend. We are going to make him sleep in your tent, just the two of you. Now's your chance. My chance to talk him out of pressing charges or suing us, Kelly said sarcastically. Do you even know who he is? One of the parents at our kid's fancy new school? Tiana shrugged. Whatever. He's a Ramsley, Kelly shrieked. Like that explains anything, Beck said. Think big pharma, big insurance, hospitals, and hotel chains. Kelly threw her hands in the air. She got up and paced. His family owns the hospital I work at. They're the type of people who have mansions and fancy cars. They can go yachting or on trips to Europe at the blink of an eye. We are screwed. Then you'd better make his weekend really good, Beck said flippantly. If you need a box of little friends, let me know. Kelly moaned. Are you listening to anything I say? He's rich, blah, 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 whatever. Bex came over and hugged Kelly. He can't get blood from a stone. All of us are so poor, it's laughable. Derek wasn't involved, so he won't lose his job. You were involved, so you won't have any issues with Bentley. Bo doesn't have anything to lose. Neither do Tiana or I. Oh, what about Tomlin? I'm assuming he was in on it since the whole respect thing, Kelly asked. No one knows what Tomlin does. He's going to disappear as he always does, and we won't see him till next year, Beck said. I don't think you need to worry. What is with this whole worrying side of you, Tiana asked. Usually you just roll with it. Kelly didn't want to talk about it. She sighed. Let's go back to camp and see what the damage is. Don't worry. Once Mr. Stuffy learns to have some fun with us, he'll be fine, Beck stated confidently. Kelly rolled her eyes. Don't call him that. What, Mr. Stuffy? How about Kelly's crush? Or Mr. Uptight? Tiana suggested. Stop it. Kelly led the way back to the cars. Her previously growling stomach had bottomed out in nervousness, and she knew she wasn't going to be able to eat breakfast, but coffee was a necessity at this point. There was no way she was going to make it through the day without some. She wondered how she was going to be able to avoid Dylan, and still have him not contact a lawyer or police officer. She had no desire to go to jail. They trailed her and kept lobbing around names. Mr. makes Kelly tingle. Mr. acts and dresses twice his age. We don't know that, Tiana said to Bex. We don't know his age. Should have grabbed his wallet, Bex said, slapping her forehead. Then we could have seen if their signs were compatible. Mr. makes Kelly blush. Mr. needs to let his hair down. Kelly sighed as they walked past the cars. Thankfully, she could smell coffee. Would you two quit it? Mr. needs to get laid, Beck snickered. Maybe you can help him out, Kelly. Very funny, Dylan said dryly as he shut the door on the truck and walked to join the guys making breakfast. He had changed from his formal suit into forest-friendly camping attire, loaned to him by the group. I am just going to bury myself in a sand pit, Kelly announced. Can this day get worse? No, you didn't, Bex wailed. Shh, Tiana clapped a hand over Kelly's mouth. Too late, Derek said. We all heard the words. Bo shook his head. Kelly girl, what were you thinking? What? Dylan looked at the members of the group. Obviously, this was an inside joke. He had the feeling he was going to find a lot of those over the weekend. Tomlin explained, It's our rule to never invite worse luck. We've all come out of a junk life, and we know the only way out is by crawling up, not indulging in self-pity. Define junk life, Dylan asked. Two unadoptable foster kids, Tomlin pointed to Bo and Bex. I had anger issues, Bo affectionately put an arm around Bex. 
She had health issues with her heart as a kid. No one wanted us. Want to see my scar? Bex asked innocently. No, cried Kelly. The last thing they needed was for Bex to flash the group. Babe, Tomlin smiled wolfishly. I'm the only one who gets to see your scar. Bex winked at Tomlin. I was one of too many kids to a woman who cried, Where's my food stamps? every chance she could, Tiana said dryly. She abuses the system to this day. I don't know who my dad is. I also stupidly got pregnant at 17 because I thought it would last forever and I wouldn't be my mom. You're not your mom, Kelly said quietly. We all did better than where we came from. Tiana rolled her eyes and wrapped an arm around Kelly. I know I'm not her. I actually have a job and pay my rent. Kelly had a single mom who is an alcoholic and druggy, Tomlin said. I actually ran her some of those drugs, something which I'm not proud of. I spent a lot of time in and out of juvie. They all said the words so matter-of-fact, like the pain of the past didn't matter. Dylan knew it did. What about Derek? Derek had a bitter laugh. My childhood is not PG. Therefore, it is not discussed. What about you, rich boy? Bo asked. There was no malice in the nickname, just curiosity in the question. I had an excellent childhood, Dylan said calmly. At least he doesn't lie, Derek said, passing around cups of coffee. No one owns the market on pain, Dylan remarked. Life is full of it. It's also full of love, hurt, joy, and everything in between. Everyone has their moment of rock bottom. Really? Derek challenged. What was yours? A slip in the stock market? Derek, Tomlin warned him. We shared our stories. Derek shrugged belligerently. Dylan, you don't have to, Kelly said, even as she was curious herself. Next month is the four-year anniversary of my daughter Shannon's death. Dylan looked directly at Derek. As for my rock bottom, that was the death of my wife. Derek looked at Dylan a moment, measuring him. He saw something, perhaps the sadness that could not be banished, and he nodded, the moment passing. Who wants breakfast? Bo asked. I'm starved. Plus, we've got a wicked hike up. Are you staying? Kelly asked Dylan. Might as well. He gave her a tight smile. Maria would expect him to be gone the entire weekend after that phone call from Bex, although he had no wish to explain things to her when he returned. Also, it would be unfair of him to strand the group with one vehicle, neither of which could legally hold the six remaining in the group, which meant that if he did take the truck, he would need someone to come with him. It didn't seem very fair, even if they had kidnapped him. He tried to ignore the suggestion from his brain that spending time with Kelly might also factor in his decision to stay. They had kidnapped him. Dylan was still having trouble processing that. He accepted a napkin with toast and eggs from Bo. Where did you learn those moves? Tomlin asked, chewing his toast. The foot to the knee was brilliant. Honduras. Two women for distraction and the mugger behind, Dylan shrugged. Back then I had a friend with me, so we managed to get away. What were you doing there? Bo asked. Exploring the countryside, Dylan said. Max and I used to visit all sorts of countries and go scuba diving for shipwrecks. An adult life caught up with me, and I haven't been out since. Max Ramsley? Who married Paget? Kelly asked. My cousin, Dylan confirmed. How do you know them? Kelly had a laugh. His brother Michael was my patient when he had surgery. I taught him about Snapchat so he could keep showing me pictures of Amy. You're the one to blame, then, Dylan remarked mildly. He's become a Snapchat fiend. Considering he barely speaks, I don't think anyone is going to begrudge him a little Snapchat. Kelly rolled her eyes. Plus, I liked seeing what's going on in his life with Anne. They are such a nice couple. They are, he agreed. It didn't take very long for the group to enjoy breakfast and break camp. Everyone got something to carry along, and they walked along a well-worn trail. It had been ages since Dylan had done anything approaching camping. Definitely pre-marriage. Wren hadn't been the type to go camping. He firmly shoved thoughts of his deceased wife away and enjoyed the sunshine through the trees. It was easy, walking through the woods and listening to them chatter happily. 
It was obvious that they'd been a group of misfits who had bonded tightly and made the commitment to see each other each year. They included him naturally, asking if rich people camped and if he'd been to this particular park before. Dylan could feel himself relax. He should take Avery and Caden camping. He wondered why he had never thought to do so before now. Dylan thought that they would like the experience. He hadn't realized just how much he had missed it until now. They hiked for most of the day, pausing for breaks and looking at various landmarks. Once, they accidentally surprised a small group of deer. The group enjoyed the moment before they were spotted, and the deer bounced away. An hour before dusk, they came upon the ruins of an old mill near the flat river. The water was shallow and clean. The group made camp for the night and broke out fixings for pancakes and s'mores. Dylan watched them with some amusement as after the impromptu supper, a deck of cards made an appearance. Old maid, Beck suggested. Hi-low, Tomlin countered with another card game name. You need even players for that, Derek objected. Crazy eights. Rummy, Bo recommended. Not enough cards for all of us, Kelly pointed out as she toasted a marshmallow for a s'more. Gin, Tiana said. Didn't bring any. Beck smiled at her own joke. Very funny, Tiana replied. They agreed on gin. Three hours later, Dylan found out that they were a very competitive bunch of card players. They had disintegrated into playing rounds of spoons, and more than once, his knuckles had been wrapped in good fun. Dylan also learned that Bo was a firefighter. No one knew what Tomlin did. Tiana worked as an aide in a nursing home. Bex was employed at a fertility clinic, and Derek was a paralegal who worked for a strict workaholic. He also learned that Kelly had lost her nursing job. Being a single parent, he could sympathize. How many times had he been late to work or had to leave early because of issues with his kids? How many weeks hadn't he worked partial hours in the office when Shannon was ill? If he weren't the owner's son and hadn't been a manager, would he have been reprimanded and possibly let go? Dylan knew there were a lot of perks being in the position that he was. He wondered if he should interfere and talk to one of his cousins to see if he could get Kelly her job back, or at least something similar. He watched as she smiled and joked about losing her job, but he could see the strain in her smile. Soon enough, the group elected Bo to put out the fire since it was in his job description. They were assigned to the three tents. Dylan found himself paired off with Kelly. When she protested, the group firmly stated that sleeping arrangements were non-negotiable. While he didn't appreciate the matchmaking, Dylan could admire their attempts to help their friend out. He assured Kelly it was fine since they were just sleeping anyways. Kelly tried not to be too embarrassed as they got ready to go to sleep. She focused on her nightly routine. Dylan was gentlemanly enough to let her choose her side of the tent. She crawled onto her side and realized that the tent was just too small. It was tiny. There was going to be barely enough room for both of them and their packs. Kelly pushed her stuff into a corner as far as she could. It really wasn't enough room. She briefly thought about putting the packs, shoes, and other items between them both as a barrier, but couldn't see herself trapped in the edge of the tent. It just wouldn't be comfortable. Instead, she pulled herself as far away as Dylan as she could, tensely allowing perhaps a couple of inches between them. She tried to relax, but it was hard. Other than sleeping with Tiana on the camping trips, she hadn't shared a bed since Bentley was a toddler. Before that, it had been her husband for a few months, until he became so ill that sharing a bed was painful for him. Kelly had never shared a bed before her husband. She had learned Tiana's painful lesson of being abandoned by her baby daddy, and didn't want to repeat it. Keeping her back to Dylan, she tried to relax but admitted to herself it was probably going to be a long night. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for the next chapter of Reluctant Husband. Also, please share this video for others to find it. This is free for you and would really help me grow my audience with the algorithms. Thank you.